and it's unlimited. 417, 430? 445, 470, 509 meg. Space is about to explode! Hey guys, I know this is not our normal Sunday schedule where we're working through those episodes in the boatyard, but we had something incredibly exciting that we could not wait to share with you guys. Absolutely, yeah. We're going to jump you ahead a couple of weeks, but don't worry, on Sunday we're going to go right back to where we left off in the yard. So you're not going to miss a beat, but this news was too good not to share right now. <laughs> However, this isn't the place to share that news. No, we need a better location. Okay, cool. Bear with us, two seconds. Well, this is much more like it. I know, right? Yeah, this is perfect. And for you guys who follow the channel, you know that we release an episode every single Sunday. And to be honest, we love it. We love filming it, we love editing it, we love picking the music for it, all of that stuff. And we really enjoy like commenting and chatting with you guys as well. It's a nice way to know that you're out there. Yeah, the hardest part of the whole thing is none of the hours that we put into actually creating the videos. Seriously. It's just the connectivity and the uploading of these episodes onto the internet so that you can actually see them from wherever you are in the world. Yeah, and I know that if you're on land, you've got Wi-Fi, you've got broadband, you've got 4G, LTE, 5G, and if all that fails, you can go down to Starbucks and you can connect to their internet. It's really straightforward to be online and frankly, you just live with a connected phone or something in your, in your world, right? But surprisingly, when you're in places like this, not nothing. so much. Literally nothing. In fact, right now, no phone signal, none whatsoever, nada, zippo. And that is not uncommon in our lives. We genuinely live day to day, pretty much their phones shut down. So for that reason, we've actually had to build out a whole armory <laughs> of solutions yeah. to try and stay online just to upload episodes to you guys. And that starts with phones. Like we have got mountains of these things and we use them as hotspots. We try and connect or we just connect straight on the phone. We've actually got to a stage where we use them so much that at least one of these, I think this one, we actually burnt this one out. It can't even connect anymore. It's been used so much. Um, the antenna or something is bust on it. Yeah. And yeah, we've gone through quite a few. We have like old ones and new ones and all sorts. Um, actually new, none of these are new. <laughs> none of them are new. Second, third hand, hand-me-downs. But this has been like our primary way of trying to get in touch with you guys. We can put local SIM cards into those with whatever deal the country we're in at the time happens to have. Uh, but we also use these hotspots as well. So this creates a little Wi-Fi network on the boat. This one is like super old school. Oh, Plugs into your laptop in the, side of your, in the side of your computer with USB so that you don't have to use up a phone or set this on fire while it's trying to keep up with the hotspot. And the problem with that is all of these <laughs> are using local SIM cards. We have to go and buy a SIM card, yeah. pay for data rates, all that stuff, which is a pain. Yeah. Uh, we also have this one as well, which we don't actually use as much. The idea is it's it's a global thing, so supposedly wherever we are in the world, we should be able to make this work and connect somehow. It barely works. I think we used it like twice. It's a backup of a backup kind of idea, right? Totally, yeah. Plan H. H. <laughs> Literally the worst idea in the world. So when this doesn't work or we need to do something a bit more technical, sometimes you have to like wire stuff in. Uh, and obviously that's really difficult with any phones and hotspots. And so we actually got ourselves one of these guys. This is like more like a router router you might have in your house. It's got the connections and stuff, but it also takes a SIM card and it connects with these big fat antennas to the cellular network. So when we have to do technical stuff, we can use this guy. We can use this. It's not broken, it's not broken. <laughs> we can use this guy and we can connect to the internet sometimes using this as well. And let's just be a bit more technical. If we are not quite close enough to shore to be able to reach any of these 3G or 4G networks... When does that ever happen? <laughs> then we have this beast. Huge tangle of wires. Um, and it is basically a phone reacher. So this part is a super powerful antenna. Reaches further than any of our phones would be able to, to pick up phone signal from shore and then brings it into the boat and basically powers it out through this little box. So if we plug our, or not even plug a phone in, just hold your phone near to this, it might pick up a little scrap more of signal that means that we can connect. And we used that. Uh, where were we? We were sailing to Trinidad, actually. Oh, yeah. We, we had to connect to get 
at like our medical stuff. Yeah, as we were passing Grenada and we didn't have time to stop and clear in, but we were like, maybe if we plug this in, then we can just about scrape enough scrap of a signal Tiniest. to be able to pick up an email, and it worked. It did. We're a couple of miles offshore, and we managed to get connected, and, and you managed to do all the downloading. But that does involve standing inside, <laughs> holding the phone, like you say, leaning out the window. Kind of. Yeah, it is it's not practical as a long-term solution. Yeah, and then uh, and if we are close to shore and we don't want to use all of this stuff, the free option is Wi-Fi. Sometimes and if very you're rarely. Extremely lucky. It, it's happened maybe like four times. Yeah. We actually have up the mass uh, a Wi-Fi reacher of sorts. Basically, it's like a fancy internet router that's made to try and grab free Wi-Fi from shore. So some beach bars and places like that, and maybe even hotels, have Wi-Fi networks that will let us connect it, um, which is very generous of them, very kind. We often buy a drink to say thank you. Yeah. Uh, but that only really works when you're close enough to places that are built up enough to have internet. Yeah. And again, doesn't happen all that often. And the problem is all of this stuff is super energy hungry, right? So just to run phones, you have to charge a phone which then wants to update apps and all that sort of stuff. Running a router, it's, it's a big heavy duty router, it's using a lot of power. And that phone booster thing, it just kills your batteries. So, after two years waiting for this, because we thought about this way in advance and couldn't do anything about it, we have finally decided to join the space race. Da, 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 da. We're doing it! We're so excited! It happened, it really did. We have saved Scrimped and pulled together just enough pennies to be able to get hold of Starlink. And uh, I mean, if you haven't heard of Starlink, the long story short, it is satellite data connectivity. It allows us to be connected to internet, broadband speed internet, almost anywhere in the world. Um, That's just ridiculous. Yeah, it's nuts. It's still growing, it's still kind of forming. So it's not 100% yet, but we basically opportunity arose. We could not say no, we just had to take the leap. And so we're trying it out, which is, um, yeah, it's crazy. It's if it works, crazy. it's going to completely change the way that we work. Not just like uploading episodes, but just connecting in general to not living quite so isolated. So yeah, I'm like crazy excited about this. That's it, all magic, it's just magic. And if it works, it is unlimited internet on Indioko, which is a first for Just us, that's insane. Um, so yeah, we are not technically in an area of coverage, so it's gonna be really interesting to see how it performs. We're still yeah. in the Caribbean, right? Caribbean has not got Starlink at the point we're filming this. I'm sure in like a day from now, they're gonna say, <laughs> oh yeah, it's fully open. When we're filming this, it ain't covered. So this is gonna be interesting to see how it performs. Yeah, let's set it up. We gotta do this. All right, uh, two seconds. We have to give a huge shout out to our first ever patron, Mark, for helping us get set up with this system. You're an absolute legend, sir. Thank you so much. What a game changer. Okay, so where are we gonna put this thing? So, um, good friends of ours, Adam and Chiara, over on Silly Millennial Falcon, they recently gifted us a wonderful fishing rod holder they got hold of, uh, and we don't own any fishing rods. So, <laughs> <laughs> I figured it's almost the right size. It's actually just a bit too big. So, <laughs> in my wisdom, I 3D printed a little adapter. Oh my goodness, you're so smug. I am very smug. I managed to 3D print this one last night. It was really easy. It's, it's a hollow tube with a little bracket base. And the best part is this little springy clip thing. It even lines up to that, so. Oh, nice. Stuck on. And then, if I've measured it right. Like a glove! <laughs> How is that? Looks like it's purpose built. It's pretty much there. So yeah, I should actually explain. So there is a new package announced like last week called the Maritime Package and it is stupid expensive. It's like $10,000 for this bit and $5,000 for coverage. Yes, we did not pay that. <laughs> exactly, we don't have that money. Uh, we will never have that money. So <laughs> this is what they call the RV package. So it's the same hardware as the residential one and all that stuff, but it lets us move around. Um, and it's the same price as the residential package. So it's like $130, I think. Um, so it's not really made for marine use and stuff, but from what I've read and what I understand, it, it's just fine, so long as you don't get it too wet. Um, I know, I'm so nervous of how precarious it looks, but... It, it, you know what? That's pretty solid, actually. Yeah. Compared to the stupid base they provided it with, this big metal X thing, which just slides around, that is actually more stable than it's ever going to be anywhere else. So does it need to be like all the way off the side of the boat like this? We can't just shove it like next to the mast or something? Yeah, so the way it works means we need to have clear view of the sky. 
So if you don't understand already, you may not have read about this, but Starlink is different to a lot of the satellite technologies out there like Iridium Go and Imarsat and things like that. There's all sorts of ones on offer. All of those use something called geostationary satellites, which means that they put satellites up and then around the Earth, they kind of lock onto a position and they're always facing that position. So as the Earth turns, the satellite is moving at the same speed. Whereas with Starlink, they've used a totally different concept called low Earth orbit. Basically, it means that all of the satellites are only about 500 miles up, but there's lots of them and they're all moving around the world and like, like a, an atom, I guess, electrons running around an atom. So the more they put up, the more coverage they can offer. And this guy basically pings up and connects to multiple satellites. So as the satellites are running across the sky, it connects to the first one, then it connects to the next one at the same time. And then when the first one falls out of view, it connects to the third and the fourth. So it's always connected, but it's always connected to a different satellite. Does that make sense? Yeah, so it shouldn't matter where we are too much. Not too much, yeah. So they're still building out what they call the shell. Uh, which is like all of the satellites covering the whole world. But they've already been launching, I think they launched like 40 every time they send a Falcon rocket up with SpaceX and all that stuff. So they've been filling out the shell really quickly and then they're already onto like generation two or three of the satellites um, that they're sending up, which means that they'll all talk to each other using lasers and space lasers and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it's really, it's evolving really fast. So when we're talking about it now, and by the time people see this video, it may, it may already be out of date. Um, but the idea is, as long as you can give it a clear enough view of the sky, it should be able to see a string of satellites somewhere. So is it just gonna like whiz around on its own constantly? Um, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> it's gonna have a life of its own. I mean, some people have actually been hacking these and I'm, we might end up doing this, we'll see. And there's like two levels of hack. So you, this is like a moving head gimbal thing. So it actually will tilt and look around. But some people drill a hole just five inches up and five inches in, and you can actually disconnect the motors. <laughs> so that it's static. Uh, we might end up doing that. And I have actually just seen recently somebody took a CNC machine and they cut the hole back off. Oh, wow. And then they just took this flat pad and they just laid it flat on the roof. Um, oh, that's quite cool. Which is, yeah, really cool if it works. But until the shell fills out, I don't know if there's enough satellites straight up to be able to do it. Oh, true. So, um, so yeah, we'll keep an eye on our dropouts and see if it's losing connection or not. And hopefully, I I'm pretty sure it's going to spend most of its life at the moment at least looking north towards the States. Okay. But as they fill out more of the system, it's going to start wanting to look for other locations or just maybe straight up all the time. Who knows? Um, okay, let's turn it on. Yeah, let's turn it on. Um, that's just the case of turning on the router. Back in a sec. It's the space age. It's magic. So right now it's actually just scanning the sky to try and find a string of satellites. And then when it sees a string, it's going to turn and face the direction they're coming from. That's crazy. Cool, so we are powered up. This is the router that they send you with the Starlink. It's kind of a bit different because it actually has no network connectors on it. It only has power and that's the satellite. That's the dishy as it's called, the satellite dish. Um, it's so simple. It's, you cannot go wrong. I literally just plugged it in, two connectors, and it's done. I love the fact that this thing is, so all of this is just financing Elon Musk going to Mars. <laughs> so apparently this is like the launch sequence or something to get from Earth to Mars or I don't know. Just in case anyone wants to try it themselves. Basically, yeah. So uh, so yeah, we plugged it in, turned it on. Dishy is kind of settled down now, facing north, as I guessed. And this is the Wi-Fi. So basically, I just open up the app on my phone and it'll just tell me if we're online. There you go, a little animation that says we're online. And it's, it's that is it, we're done. You just connect to the Wi-Fi and you're good. What? It's that simple. What's fun is they actually they've added a few things so you can do a speed test um, and the speed tests are kind of fun to do because you get to see the performance of the Wi-Fi router which is already... Does what? that say 150? 160 babe, 160 something it just flickered. 157 is the end point and that is from the phone through the wireless to the dish. To space! Through space and back and then they have this other one where you can do like show me just the dish versus the Wi-Fi. Um, this one is blowing my mind. Watch this. I can't see the numbers on this, but like it should be going crazy. 200. 210. Yeah. So I got four on my phone when I did it the other day. To right. This is it. We're in a completely dead zone here. So there's no phone signal. This is all bouncing from the Wi-Fi on the phone to the Wi-Fi router to the dishy 
up into space, down to some ground station somewhere, back up into space, down to this guy, down to Dishy, down to this guy to my phone, and it is running 195 meg. We're living in the future! And the Wi-Fi connection is 320. <laughs> that is insane. And it's unlimited. 417, 430? 445, 470, 509 meg. Space is about to explode! That's nuts. It's unlimited internet, so we can literally stream all day long. Oh my um, goodness! We can upload every episode. We're going to start editing in higher resolutions now. <laughs> That's insane! Oh, this is so cool! 195 meg download, 401 meg upload. It's going to take seconds to upload an episode. Normally we would take a dinghy to shore and spend the day in a closed cafe. Yeah. In the hope that they didn't turn the Wi-Fi off. That's crazy! <laughs> Oh my goodness, we have never seen speeds like this before. We are in the middle of nowhere and fully connected to the internet! This is nuts. <gasps> we could like stream music again on Spotify. <gasps> oh, we could get Netflix. I'm way ahead of you. I'm watching our own episodes. <laughs> <laughs> We've never seen our own episodes on YouTube. We don't know what they look like. We've lived them! Oh, We're here! We can do live streams for patrons now. Oh, that's so cool. We could film while sailing, live streaming like live sailing to the world. Okay, next time we sail anywhere, jump on over to Patreon and uh, yeah, we'll see you there. <laughs> Absolutely. In the meantime, uh, like and subscribe, because I am. <laughs> <laughs> Are we allowed to like our own videos? Does that work? That? Oh, I've never Does it that. like backfire? Probably, like, oh, it's like oh, an goodness, exit. You're so vain. You're what are you video. talking about? Look at my face in this video. I look great. <laughs> look at the color. <laughs>